welcome to my sewing room. If you haven't been here before, my name is Rosemary, and on this channel we try and do a lot of different kinds of crafts and sewing and sewing machines and just a lot of different things to keep everything interesting. Um, so right now we're working on a table runner, and I have it sitting right here, um, and we've been learning a lot about the PE Design software so you can learn how to create something and in the meantime while we're doing it we're, we're writing out the word Halloween and we're on the word O and we're going to do a cauldron so without further ado let's just get to the software and get working on that letter O. Okay so here we are in PE Design 11 and I think what we're going to do is we're going to make a applique first and then we'll do some embroidery on top of it. So again I'm going to go and I'm going to find some clip art. I just Google clip art cauldron. So if I go to, this is my home page when I first opened my software. If I hit image, there is going to be a part right here that says open. And I'm going to click the down arrow and hit from file. And that will open the files that I have downloaded in my computer. You can see some of the ones I've already downloaded in here that I've used. And here's a cauldron that I found in the clip art. And I'm going to say open. And I'm not going to try and make mine as detailed as this. I want to keep it pretty simple. But this is a good jumping off point. So the first thing I think I want to do is I want to make a big circle that I can start with. So what we're going to do, um, first thing, while we're in the image file, if you come right here in this top menu, uh, right here where it says minus and plus, take this little slider and slide it down a little bit so this is not quite so dark i i want i can't draw on top of it it's that dark so that makes it a little bit better and then i'm going to go home and i'm going to use my plus sign and i'm just going to draw a box around it like that and let go and that way i'm a little bit closer okay so now i'm going to go home again get my selector button and i'm going to start with a shape because that's usually the best way to start something I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. So I'm going to go home again and hit shapes. And I want a circle. And I'm going to just click, left click, and drag across my screen until I get a pretty good size circle. There's a good jumping off point for what we want. So remember, if you come back over here, this is good practice, even though you've seen me do it a whole bunch by now. Um, select your edit point. Now we've got some little edit points on here. I can click here and pull up. Now, each one of these little edit points has a curve on it. If I right click, it'll drop down a menu and I can actually say to straight. And that'll put a corner there instead of a curve. When it's a curve, it has three squares um, that you can actually pull on them and change your curve like this. But I don't want it to do that. I want it to corner. So I'm going to say to straight. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to pull it down a little bit like this. So now I've got the right curve on the top and the right curve around the edges. So that works pretty good for me. So the other thing I want to do is I want to draw this oval up here on top. So now I'm going to go home and I'm going to pick shape, pick circle, and I'm going to draw an oval on top like this. Whoops, get over here and get my selector tool so I can grab this and pull it down. Pull this in a little bit. I think what I want to do is I want to get this edit point here and I'm going to move one up and put another one there so my oval isn't quite so round on the edges. Now I could have done this just the way I've shown you do before where you just pick the shape tool and just draw around it and that might have been a little easier but I wanted to see what I could do with the shapes to make it get my curves a little bit smoother than if I had done it the other way. Okay so I'm going to go to view and pick stitch. 
So see, I can kind of see through it a little bit and see if I if I drew that pretty good. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to merge these two shapes together so I can make them into an applique. So I'm going to click up here and I'm going to hang on a minute. We're in the wrong mode. We want this this tool right here. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to drag across. So now I've got them both selected and I'm sitting here thinking a little bit, do I really want to merge these? Because if I make them two separate appliques, I'll have that line going through it, which might be what I really want. Well, let's not merge them. Let's leave them separate. So we got this first one here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to say applique wizard. Yes, tack down, applique position. No, I don't want another tack down. Um, zigzag stitch and replace. That's the way it's, well, I said it the last time. I am going to make my stitch satin stitch just a little bit thicker and then I'm going to say okay. That's pretty good. And then we'll do it again. We'll just do this one. Applique wizard. Okay. Okay, so now I've got two appliques on top of each other. So now what I could do is I could add these little feet on here, but I don't think I need it for what we're trying to do. We just wanted something that looks like a cauldron that's going to do the job. So the next thing I want to do is I think I want to put these little circles on here just to make it look more like a cauldron. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to shapes. I'm going to pick a circle, click and drag. So I end up with a circle, but I'm going to say under the fill stitch, do not sew. And then under the satin stitch, I'm going to come all the way over here where it says sewing attributes and I'm going to make my zigzag stitch wider. That's pretty good. And I'm going to just put it right there. And you know what? I think we'll make it, the, it more of an oval, less like a circle. I think that looks pretty good. And then we're going to do control D. And we're going to put another one over here. And this little red circle that's across, that's a um, rotating key. So I can rotate this a little bit in like that. Click on this one, rotate in a little bit like that. There. Now we're going to do something up here on top. So let's just go this way and get my shapes tool, my oval. And we're going to pull across the top here. So we end up with another one here. And I am going to do the applique wizard again. So let's go home, applique wizard. Um, this time I don't think I want the applique to be so wide. And then say, okay. And let's scroll down here and make this satin stitch. Whoops. Click on it. So only that selected, not all three of them. This satin stitch right here, let's make that one green. Kind of keeps me so I know what the heck I'm doing here. We're going to make this one black and this one black. And what I can do is I can take this one. I want this to sew first and then put the black applique on top of it because I wanted to cover that edge. So I'm just going to leave that one just the way it is. Okay. So we got a cauldron. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to put some little like half bubbles on the top here. And the way that you do that is all you have to do is hit your shapes tool, pick your circle. Whoops. I'm sorry. Hit your shapes, let's go home, hit your shapes tool. We're going to pick this half circle right here. See this one? If you click on that and you draw a circle, then when you let go of your mouse, 
it puts a line here and then you can click and drag around and then double click to release it and now i just created a bubble and i could make that into an applique i could make it into an embroidery i think i want to make this one a um just an embroidery so i'm gonna say not sewn and then fill stitch and make this green we'll flip it around to the other side and we'll put it right here and i'm going to control d make it a little bit smaller and put one right here um so now i have my cauldron completely made that was that was pretty fast and easy wasn't it um so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to save this so i'm back from the the computer and we went ahead and i sewed out the, the cauldron ahead of time so you can see what it looks like this is my grandson ozzy and this is my granddaughter Layla. you saw them in one of my other videos and i thought i'd bring them back while we glue some of the buttons on this and i'll move the camera so you can see what we're doing but in the before that i want to show you this is what the cauldron looks like on the quilt and I actually did this in a vinyl, which is a really cool vinyl that you can buy. You know, when nowadays they have all the cutting machines like the Cricut and the Brothers Scan and Cut. So you can, where they sell those, they, they sell the vinyls and the glitters and all the different things. And so I put a black vinyl on here and then I used a glittery vinyl for the uh, brew that's in the cauldron. I thought that was really fun to do that. So we, and then I went ahead and I put the batting on the back and the backing and I quilted it a little bit. We're still not done. We still have a whole lot more to go, but uh, that's okay. I can add and quilt as we go. I wanted to get that part quilted so we can go ahead and put the buttons on there. So um, I do want to show you, you could sew. That's um, an easy way to go about it, but I like to go an even easier way about it and just glue them on there. And one of the really good glues is Fabri-Tac. It glues very quickly like hot glue and it stays permanently. It probably will make it so I can't throw this in the washing machine, but that's okay. Because if I do wash it, I'll just wash it by hand. Um, so we're going to use Fabri-Tac. And then I have this little jar full of buttons. And I have to do a shout out to my friend Donna. She's one of our customers in the store. She gave me all these really fun buttons. And um, I do have some green ones that I bought at Joann's. But then I've got pumpkins and skulls and hands and we're just going to try and have some fun with it. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and move the camera over here. And then you can see what we're doing. And Ozzy and Layla are going to help me to put on our cauldron. Okay, so besides the fact that we're going to use some Fabri-Tac, I also wanted to show you that these are uh, wire cutters. I use them a whole lot when I'm doing clay and stuff. But when you buy these buttons that have uh, little uh, shanks on the back of them, they don't lay flat against your um, embroidery that you're doing. So you know what I do? I just take my, my wire cutters and I just pop that off like that. And that'll make it so I can even sometimes get a little bit closer and get a little bit more of it off but I try and get it as flat as I possibly can and then when I go to glue it we're going we glue it flat right up against what we're doing and I just noticed that there isn't a left hand and a right hand which is a little bit disappointing but we can do two right hands what do you think like that and then we can do a skull coming out of it what do you think or you want to move them up here? So we can do that. And then you guys can kind of just pick some buttons that you think would be fun. I thought maybe a pumpkin floating in the, in the air. Like, don't put them too close to the edge. But we can put them even coming down on the side like this if we want to. And then we're just going to take just a little bit of this and put it. And then glue it like that. Okay? So you think you can squeeze that? Squeeze it on the back of the skull there. Pick out a couple that you like, Ozzy, that would be fun to put on there. Just t t put it right here. Okay, we'll just push it down like that. Do it Now do the hands. We can put... What do you think, Ozzy? Which one do you want to do? Here, take the glue bottle 
and put a little glue on the back of one of those and then just put it up so it's like it's bubbling up and over the top of the cauldron. I like these like this. Okay, go ahead and just turn it upside down and put it right on the middle of the quilt, right there. Push down. There you go. Whoops. That's okay. Let's move it up a little bit higher. There. That way it looks like it's coming up out of there. I wanted to show you this stuff right here. This is, um, it's, it's actually made by OESD. It's a vinyl. It cuts really nice. It sews really good and you can put it on lots of different products. And um, I really like to do it on something like this because it just adds a little bit of sparkle to what you're doing. So that's what we used in there. So we're going to just keep on going and gluing this together to try and make it look a little bit more fun like our pot is boiling over. And um, next week, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on the W, which is going to be a bat. And we are going I am gonna do that in Design Center and I'll show you how to go about doing that. So um, I hope you had fun this project and we will see you next week.